Hello and welcome to this prep video for 607-181 Hydrology and Conservation. This one dealing with the calculation of your peak flow using the rational method. In terms of hydrology, we want to go through and determine how to calculate our peak runoff. In order to do that, we're going to look at the DOT website. So I'm going into doing business, www.dotwisconsin.gov, design and construction. We'll come down to their FDM, facilities development manual. And we have drainage. And we're looking for chapter 13 drainage section 10 subject so this is the drainage practice documentation of hydraulic design which steps you through all the layouts of everything And we're looking for 13.10.5, Methods of Determining Peak Runoff. So if I go to that, and we look at Chapter 13, Section 10, Subject 5, Methods to Determine Peak Runoff. The first step in designing a hydraulic structure is determine the amount of water to be carried through the design discharge. The run, there are main methods to determine discharge value. The methods presented in this chapter may be classified based off of rainfall frequency. The runoff methods presented in this chapter that the DOT uses is one, the rational method, two, what they call small urban hydrology for small watersheds, which is TR55, Three, USGS flood frequency equations for the state of Wisconsin. Specifically, the flood frequency characteristics of Wisconsin streams developed in 1992. Now, when do you use these? Figure one is the guideline for the limits of each one. So let's look at this. We're going to use rational method for areas, basin areas that are less than a thousand acres typically five square miles you don't want to go much bigger than that i mean five ten less than definitely less than a thousand acres tr55 can be used up to what they're claiming as two thousand acres um, typically it's like 25 square miles anything above that even with the TR55, you want to go then into the frequency equations for Wisconsin. Now, in case you happen to go into there, what would that be? Well, let's go back up. Just go there and we'll pick it straight up. So, if by chance you start doing an analysis for a larger watershed, what you want to do is go in here to flood frequency characteristics of Wisconsin streams. I'm just going to control C. I'm going to open up a new website. Go to Google. And by just typing Google in this, you can see the publications, the USGS.gov.wisconsin. 
here is the flood frequencies characteristics of Wisconsin streams. So this is all online. What's really nice about this, let's look at this map showing the stream location with regards to the gauge stations in Wisconsin. This is a map of all the streams in Wisconsin, the major streams. And what you can see by this are all the different gauging stations, stream flow gauging stations, crest record stations, active stations, regulated stream flow gauging stations, and all these different creeks. And we'll zoom in to our area of Wisconsin. Go over here. Down here in Racine County. You can see on the Pike River. We have one right there. We have one right here, etc. So you have a number of these different gauging stations that are active that tell us for the larger streams what exactly the hydrograph's been. What is the existing flow rates for the different storm events? So we actually have real data showcasing what the flood event is and how the hydrograph actually functions. Instead of doing a very conservative model to overestimate it. So once again, if you get into the larger streams where you're calculating for bridges and stuff, you may want to go into this. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was the map of Wisconsin showing soil permeability. And this will come into play. You don't need to print this one out, but this is a nice map. Because this is showing the state of Wisconsin. Once it loads here. With regards to soil permeability range, what you generally see. Now, if you look here in Wisconsin and Racine area right here, typically we're looking at this data range right here 2 to 8, 0.2 to 0.8 inches per hour. We have pretty much constant soil permeability through our range, a little bit higher up through here and on the coast. And then right along the edge, if you're talking right at the edge, then it drops off. It gets kind of hard to permeate that soil along the edge. But for most of Racine County, we're looking at this. However, when you get into Walworth and Rock County, note you got higher permutation, I mean permeabilities going on. So that's something to keep in mind with regards to this chart. Let's go back to our method and what we're interested in right now is we're going to look at the rational method. This is the method I want to showcase today. Later on this semester we'll get into TR55. We will not get into the stream analysis but we will touch on TR55 later on. But for most of the urban sections and most of your small drainage areas the rational method is what comes into play. Like I said, once again, that's based off of figure one, which is your small area. So a rational method. The rational, right here is the definition of the rational method. And this is the predominant way of doing storm sewer designs. And it's used for small rural basins of 200 acres or less. And the following occurs. This is your major equation right here. So let's zoom in a little bit to highlight this. This one right here is your major equation. Q equals CIA, not the FBI, but the CIA. And what does the Q, which is our peak runoff rate, our Q max, and we calculate in that cubic feet per second. So one cubic foot per second, or how many cubic feet of water is going to be discharged going through our pipe per second. That's the rate that we're looking at, this runoff rate. C is a runoff coefficient for the land. This identifies the land runoff coefficient. The intensity 
is our inches per hour. How hard is the rain coming? And that comes from, once again, our sewer pack data right here for our rainfall frequency where we did this table and we converted that table over into an intensity of inches per hour. So we have the inches per hour in terms of the rainfall going on. And then we come back. And A is your drainage area in acres. If you use the metric version for some odd reason, uh, then realize that you got a coefficient up here, a metric conversion coefficient, which is right here, to convert this because your A is going to be in hectares, not in acres. And your runoff is going to be cubic meters per second, not cubic feet per second. So we understand I. A is our drainage area. That's our entire drainage area that's draining to our point of analysis. And now we have to look at our C. C is our matrix runoff coefficient. If we look at figure two, and this is where it's really cool having this printed out. We talked about the, um, this is the coefficients that are assigned for different usage. And notice it's based off of the hydraulic soil group. What does that mean? If we come down here, soil types. So type A is the lowest runoff potential. And notice that was the stuff near the coastline of Lake Michigan. Include deep sands with very little silt and clay, also deep, rapidly permeable. I'm sorry, lowest runoff potential is A. That's the stuff that just soaks straight through. B, most sandy soils less than A and loams less than the aggregate, but the type is above average infiltration through wetting. C, comprises of shallow soils and soils con containing considerable clay, though less than D. And D, D is your highest impermeable stuff. So A is your most permeable, that's your sands. So around the beach, that would be an A, where the sands rapidly permeate into the ground. D is your hardest stuff, that is most of your clays, but also includes some sh uh, shallow soils with nearly impermeable subhorizons near the surface, meaning that water is not going to soak into the ground. Most of the stuff that we deal with here in Racine is going to be B or C. And you can correlate this to your permeation rates. But uh, this is our condition. So most of our stuff is going to be hydraulic group C or soil type C or B. Now we'll go back up here. So this is for specific land use for industrial areas. Uh, commercial, high, de resident, high density residential, medium density residential, low density residential, agricultural, open space, freeways and expressways. And you notice this is kind of like a percentage of how much water will go on. If one, for instance, let's go down here and we look at concrete. Concrete, very little of the water is going to soak into the concrete. It's going to spread along the concrete. So typically that soil, that C value for concrete is going to be 0.95. So, or 95% of the water that hits will go down and reach our point of analysis if it's coming across concrete. However, if it's coming across agriculture, especially like for soils that really soak in, only... 8% of that water may actually come across. The rest of it's going to permeate down into the ground aquifer. So these are, you can see the different ranges and stuff. And this is how we come up with the C value for the different land types, depending on what type of land, how the land is being used.
one of the things that we need to figure out, and we looked at it when we were talking about the hydrographs, was the time of concentration. The time of concentration tells us how long it's going to take for that last droplet of water to reach our point of analysis. And that's where we have our storm duration. Because the time of concentration, that last point coming to our point of analysis, we got to decide, is that going to take 15 minutes for that last droplet of water to reach there, or 60 minutes? That duration comes into here. So depending on what type of design year you have, let's say you have a 10-year design storm, and it takes 15 minutes for that furthest drop of water to reach, that's your time of concentration. Your intensity then, for the rational method, would be 4.28. So once again, you have your design year. What year storm are you going to design for? Is it a low impact thing like a culvert? You may only design for five years. If it's a detention basin, you want to make sure you capture all the wire because it's important to detain all that wire so it doesn't flood downstream. You may have more conservative by using a 100-year design system. And then for your structure, you're going to look and say, okay, we have a 30-minute time of concentration for our 100-year design storm. So that would give me an intensity of 2.90 that I'd want to use for the rational method. So that's how we go about determining our intensity. Another way you can calculate that T sub C is for small basins, you can use this chart. And let's say we have, for instance, We come in here and we know that, for instance, in this case, the height, we had 200 feet above a fall along our basin. But let's just say we had 20 feet. So from the top of our structure down to our point of analysis, this drop, let's say, is... 20 feet, right? I just want to get a different color. So this drop is going to be 20 feet right here. So we're going to say 20 feet of drop from our furthest point away to our point of analysis. And then how long is our flow line? Well, let's say our flow line is going to be, um, let's say, 1,000 feet. So we have a 20 foot drop over a thousand feet. How long is our line? We just draw a straight line clear across here and our time of concentration would be seven minutes. Let's do another one. Let's say we use blue. So let's say we're doing a parking lot. Our parking lot is, whoa, don't want that. So let's say our parking lot here is 500 feet long, right? 540 feet. So our diagonal length then would be 500 squared plus 40 squared. Pythagorean theorem if we're going straight across but let's say we don't drain straight across because let's say that if we look at this let's say we actually have this is our parking lot right and everything drains this way across and then down this way. So our point of water would start here, it drain down here and then across. If that's our path, it would not be the diagonal length. 
So this would be 40 feet plus 500 feet. So that would be a total length of 540. And let's say this elevation difference up here, if this is our POA, our point of analysis, our difference is, let's say, 3 feet. Let's say we're at 1% slope. Let's just say we're at 1% slope. So 1% slope, we would be at 5 feet. So let's say 5, let's say 10, yeah, we'll say 10 feet, just to keep it simple. 10 feet to give ourselves some good slope. Let's see what happens. So we'll go back to our layout. And so we're 10 feet high, which puts us right here. Let's get a different color. So we're 10 feet high. And we were 500 feet long. I'm sorry, 540, which is right there. We could draw a line and tell us that we drain that in about four minutes. So you can see how you can go about using this chart to try to estimate how fast water flows across. And obviously, if we had just three feet of fall at that, we come up and it's going to be eight minutes. And if it's very flat, where it's just one foot of fall, you can see we're clear up to 12 minutes. So that's one way you can use this chart to help quickly estimate your time of concentration for your given channel. So let's do just a design ex one example, and we'll estimate our flow. Let's use this parking lot. So we're going to say our time of concentration, our T sub C, is 5 minutes. So our T sub C is 5 minutes. And we want this to be a 10-year design storm. Oops. So a 10-year storm. So we go to our chart. And we have a five minute time of concentration. With a 10 year storm, shows that we have 6.48 is our right here five year, 10 year storm, five minute time of concentration. Our intensity should be 6.48 inches per hour. So we know our intensity now. So we know I is 6.48. 6.48 inches per hour. Because we're a concrete uh, road, I'm going to call our C value at 0.95. And now, what is our A? Our A is 500 times 40, which equals square feet. But our A has to be in acres. So we'll come down here. We'll say our intensity is 6.48 our c value is 0 0.95 and my a value is actually plus 500 times 40 divided by 43560 which is the conversion of square feet to acres so i have 0.459 the Q, the, mac, the Q max that I'm going to be expecting at that point 
in my point of analysis, my Q max down here at my point of analysis for this drainage is going to be plus the int intensity times my C value times my area in acres. So I could expect a Q max of 2.83. So my Q max so my Q max is 2.83 CFS. And that's what I would expect to see in this parking lot at this point right here for this design scenario. So I'd have to have a culvert or a pipe that would be able to drain that to get that away. And, but that would only be good for a 10-year storm. Because remember, we sized this thing based off of a 10-year storm. If it was a 50-year storm, I'd have to increase that. I'd have the same C. I'd have the same A. I'd have the same time of concentration, right? But I just have a different design parameter for the design year storm. Let's do another one. Let's say we have a residential place. So we have this residential and let's say it's um, backyards. We'll call each one of these 150 feet deep. And there's like four lots of 300 foot frontage. And they're all draining to this spot in the middle. So the way they laid out the ground, all the drainage is actually coming down to this spot right here. Everything on this side flows somewhere else, right? So all this stuff is flowing elsewhere. But inside this area, which is my drainage area, everything flows into this spot. So my area is what? My area is going to be 369, 1200 times 300 because it's the entire drainage area which is how many acres so plus 1200 times 300 divided by 43560 I'm looking at 8.26 acres eight point two six acres now I gotta figure out my time of concentration let's say for argument's sakes that from here to here is my drainage path and we have approximately um, let's say we have six feet of fall we don't really have much relief we just have six feet of fall across that flat area so six feet of fall across that flat area and this length is going to be what that length is this distance right here 600 and this distance right here is 150 so that actual length is what at sqrt square root of 600 squared plus 150 squared so my length is 618 or a little over 600 feet let's go back to our dot page and we're going to come down here so 
we have six feet of how much fall did we say we had we have six feet of fall over 600 feet so we have six feet of fall which is right here and we have 600 feet five six hundred feet right there so we connect these two points up and our time of concentration reports out to be six minutes so our time of concentration says to be six minutes now if we go into our chart I can interpolate between these two and get my value for six minutes so I could theoretically interpolate between those two and come up with my value for six minutes or I can conservatively just use the five minute T sub C so let's say it's a 25 year design so I have a 25 year design and I'm going to say it's 7.44 now ideally it should be around 6.8 somewhere in there in between these two for a six minute storm but I'm going to just use the five minute time of concentration 7.44 will be a conservative value because I like to go back so 5 to 7.44 so my intensity is 7.44 but if I wanted to this is my conservative if I actually did want to figure that out for those two things then I can come in here and do this so I'm going to come in here and insert my scatter and I'm going to select my data add my series name is my 25 year storm year storm my x values are going to be my minutes and my y values are going to be right here now I'm doing it on minutes I know we did it in hours but I'm just trying to extrapolate out my six minute value here and say okay say okay and then I'm going to come down here and say One of these days I'll get down there my Excel sheet is stuck so I'm going to go to sheet 2 come back to sheet 1 should be there we go so I'm going to come in here with six minutes and my extrapolation is going to be zero to eight and this was the little trick we used so I'm going to select data I'm going to add my extrapolate my x values are here here my y values are here and say okay say okay and so here's my chart and now I can just zoom in on this so I'm, I know that my axis for my axis my minimum will say is 5.9 and my maximum is 6.1 since I'm right at six minutes and then I can see this is between seven and eight so I'm going to come in here and say between seven and eight and between seven one and seven two so format axis 7 1 to 7.2 
and I can see I'm at 7.13 somewhere in here so I'm just going to round up and say 7.14 to be conservative I always round up so in terms of six minutes I should have a T uh, I of 7.14 how's that match with what we had before so instead of 7.44 for six minutes this was for five minutes and we're talking 7.14 is that correct 7.14 for six minutes time of concentration and now we got to decide what our soil value is going to be here so we're going to go back to our EOT page and we want to check out our coefficients it's a low density residential we'll say we have a soil percent here and we're very flat so we're going to use the upper limit which is 0 0.28 and just to be conservative let's just say 0 0.40 this is where you have in terms of picking these numbers the way you pick the correct answer is whichever way the agency that's reviewing your plans agrees to and that's the trick to all this there isn't a hardcore science between picking these numbers the only thing that's correct is whether the agency that you're working with will agree to your C values or not agree to your C values. And so that's the defining of what's correct and incorrect with regards to these ranges. There's a range in here that the professionals have a right to choose. And so in terms of this case, since it's a very flat slope, I'm going to go with a 0.28 because if you noticed our slope here, was six feet over 600 which is a one percent slope so we're zero to two and but i'm going to pick the highest end of that range so i'm saying 0.28 now if you look also that was assuming a c type Notice the B type was down at 0.24. So I don't think we're in a D soil, which would be 0.31. So I'm just going conservatively with the 0.28. So our C value, therefore, our C is 0 0.28. And therefore, when we take those values, So I have 8 point, so I have an area of 8.26 acres with a C value of only 0 0.28, 0 0.28, and an intensity of 7.14. I have to design for a Q max of 16.5 CFS. So with this right here, this entry point right here, my Q max is going to be 16.5 CFS that I'm assuming is flowing into this basin right here. In terms of if you have multiple areas, what happens? Because we don't have all one type of stuff. You could have different proportions, right? For instance, I'm going to have a parking lot that is, say, 500 feet by 40 feet. So this is a parking lot, right? And then we got the commercial buildings. So we got the commercial buildings. That's going to be 500 feet by let's say this is 
200 feet deep. If we look at, and this is one drainage area, so this is one drainage area, that's a composite drainage area for this spot. So how do we figure that out? Well, we go back here and we see that commercial, let's just say over here, we're at 0.89. So for a commercial, it'd be 0.89 because there's a lot of roof area. So this would be 0 0.89. Zero point eight nine. In my parking lot, I'm going to say zero point nine five, right? So we got to figure out a CA value. What is the composite CA value for this? Well, I know I have five hundred at zero point nine five. I'm sorry, I have. Let's try this again. I have 500 by 40, which is going to be equal to that times that divided by 43,560 is my area. And my C value is 0 0.95, which gives me a CA for that piece of that times that. So for sub area one, in sub area two, copy these down, and this is going to be 500 by 200. And instead of uh, 1.95, this is 0 0.89. So I have an A total. of this. So this is my total area for this composite section. And this is my total CA. So this is my total CA for this area. So my average C, C value for this area, my average C value for this area that we have right here is what? It's going to be my CA total divided by my total area, or I have an average C value of 0 0.9. And I want to come in here and make sure I format my cells, number, three decimal places. So my C average for this total composite area is 0 0.9. The parking lot was 0 0.95, the commercial was 0 0.89, and the composite C value for this combined area is 0 0.9. Now, what we can do is do a series of different pieces. So, let's take a look at that now. That was just for one composite area, but let's say we have multiple areas draining. So, let's say we have this area up here, and this area down here, and we have this area here. And so we have area one, which has a pipe. Let's change the color. So we have a structure here, we have a structure here, and this flows into a structure here. And this comes out right here. So in area one, we have a C value of 0 0.9, let's say, 0 0.9. So our average C for this area is 0 0.9 with an area of 1.2 and a time of concentration of five minutes. Over here, Let's say we have a C of 0 0.60, an area of 3.5, with a time of concentration of 30 minutes. And then down here, we have a C of 0 0.7, uh, area 
of say 2.0 with a time of concentration of 15 minutes. For, and we'll call this pipe one, pipe two, and pipe three. Now for pipe one, my C value is 0 0.9. My A value for pipe one is 1.2. For a CA composite of So for pipe one, I have my overland, right? My C, A, my C, A. My C is 0 0.9. My area is 1.2. So my C, A value for my overland flow is going to be that times that. So for this overland flow coming in here, so from my overland flow coming in here, right, I find out that I have 1.8. Now, my t time of concentration. My time of concentration is five minutes. So my total for this, I'm going to have a CA of 1.08, right? And my max time of concentration is going to be five minutes. For that. So therefore I can come in and let's say we're doing a um, 10 year design. So, for a 10 year design, what is my intensity for a time of concentration of five minutes? 10 year design, time of concentration five minutes, 10 year 6.48. So we have 6.48. So my Q for pipe one is going to be plus CA times I, which means I have to size for 7.7 .7 CFS for my pipe. Let's look at pipe two. So, if I have pipe 2, right, which is over here, my C value for pipe 2 is 0 0.6. My area is 3.5. So, my CA becomes 2.1. My time of concentration is 30. And so, my intensity... For a 10-year design at 30 minute time of concentration, so 30, 10-year design, 2.90, so 2.90, and look, even though I have a lot more area right here, 3.5 versus 1.2, the fact that my time of concentration across that land is so much smaller I mean, so much greater, my intensity is dropped, and I actually have less CFS that I have to calculate for this pipe because the wire is drawn out. Does it mean that we have more coming down? No. What that means is, if you look at the hydrograph, for our first basin, we have... And it comes down, right? This Q 
is 7, but we have a time of concentration of just 5 minutes. So we don't have much area under this curve. For the next one, we only get up to 6, right? Q is equal to 6. But look at the volume here. The volume of water that we put through that pipe is going to be huge. We put in a lot of water through that pipe, but it's drawn out over a large amount of time. So the only thing that we have at any one time is 6 CFS. So that smaller pipe, even though it's putting through a lot less, it's all coming at one time. So that's why it's Q is 7, where the area 2 has this huge hydrograph, comparatively. The volume of water, if we take and actually calculate the area under this curve, would be the amount of gallons we put through that pipe. While we're only putting 6 through at any one time, we're still putting drastically more water through that pipe than we did for Q7. I mean, for the first pipe. So, we have those two things coming up. Now, right here, this is the tricky one. We sized for pipe one. We saw we had seven CFS that we got sized for, but it's all in one big gulp. P2 has only 6 CFS, but it's drawn out over a much larger time. What about P3? Let's look at P3. What pipe 3, what happens? Pipe 3. So our overland for pipe 3 is still 0 0.7 with an area of 2.0 so and our time of concentration is 15 minutes but that's the stuff going into this pipe right here so that's the stuff going into this pipe we also have pipe 1 feeding in right which has a CA coming down of 1.08 and a time of concentration of 5 and we have a pipe 2 coming in, pipe 2, that has a CA of 2.1 with a time of concentration of 30. Now, what we need to do here is we're going to add up all the CAs at sum. So we take all the CAs and we sum them up. So this whole drainage area is 4.58. This composite drainage area right here. Because that whole drainage area is draining into pipe 3. That whole area, the CA value for that entire area is 4.58. Now, in terms of concentration, we have to take the longest time it takes any one drop to reach that outlet pipe. Right? That's the definition of con time of concentration. So the time of concentration is going to be my largest number here. So in this case, it's going to be 30. So my I is 2.9. Now I'm not accounting for any pipe. It's actually like 31 minutes to account for the flow of the water through the pipe network. So you could say it was 31 minutes. I'm going to be conservative and just say this. And so now I got plus. So my Q is going to be equal to plus that times this. CFS. So my pipe 3 has to handle 13.3 CFS. Pipe 1 handled 7. Pipe 2 handled 6.1. And number 3 has to handle at any one time 13.3 CFS. Now, realize there's a lot more water coming through pipe 3 than pipe 1 or 2 because they're all three are draining into it. But this one's elongated where this was a blip. So in a sense... 
pipe three is going to have to handle this blip plus this elongated plus the stuff from itself coming in from overland and so you can see where it's any one time it's have to go and take this amount this amount plus itself and so that's why you're up here when you add these together you just can't add the maximums because the maximums don't occur at the same point in time and that's vital to understand your maximum here if there was no if we had no um, drainage right now if this was capped so if this was if I actually came in here and I put a cap on this right so I put a cap on this so no water could get into this from this area and so my drainage area now was effectively just these two draining into this pipe then I'd have to look at this drainage feature right here and realize that we're not talking 6 plus 6 to be 12 in here it would not be 12 what would it be this would be plus this plus that it'd be 9 so we'd only to be talking 9 CFS and why is that if we look at this these don't occur at the same spot so you can't add 6 plus 6 you're going to be adding 6 plus another 3 to get your maximum right in here so because this is poorly drawn but you get the idea so long story short looking at this hopefully this makes sense now that you have a composite CA for the entire area so we have a composite CA of this entire area for all three pipes that flowed into this pipe network and we'll take the cap off of this now again so this area flew into pipe one this area flew into pipe two we had a composite of all three areas flowing into pipe three with different times for their flow rates their different time of concentrations and by definition we had to take the largest TC to flow into this and thus when we did that when we added all the CAs together we came up with our 13.3 CFS that was our composite and this is how you go about calculating different C rational methods for different pipes for a single pipe and for a pipe network what is the Qmax that you're going to be looking at in terms of your hydrographs what's the maximum amount because you have to size your pipe based off of these features right here these maximum values so this concludes the introduction to the hydro, hydrology and conservations prep video detailing the rational method using the information from the DOT's website specifically the facility development manual procedure 1310.5 methods of determining peak runoff thank you